Hey folks, my name is The Raven. I'm going to show you something really, really cool. I'm standing here in Adrian, Michigan, in front of the Lenawee County Historical Museum. Check this out. That used to be the old library over there, and now it's the Historical Museum. I'm going to take you for a little tour, folks. My name is The Raven, and you're watching Internet TV from Daytona. Whoops, from uh, Adrian, Michigan. <laughs> Watching www.globalworldtv.com. Now, folks, we're going to put a link to the Historical Museum website on our front page. All you got to do is click on the link and you can go to their page. Now here's the lady, Laura Smith Haviland. We're going to explain to you what she did and why this statue is here in Adrian. Nice, nice statue of Miss Laura Smith Haviland. Erected by the Adrian Woman's Christian Temperance Union and the Haviland Memorial Association. Miss Laura Smith Haviland. And there's Rosie the Riveter right there. That's a famous picture, folks. Special exhibit, free administration, September 15th to August 15th. Take a little walk, take you through the museum, folks. You're going to like this. Now, let me tell you something, folks. This museum is free. When's the last time you've seen a free museum? Every one I've ever been to in my life charges a couple bucks at the door. This one's free. Step into Lenaway's history. Come on in. Some pictures on the wall right here at the museum. Standing inside the entranceway. The Lenaway Historical Museum. Yeah. Checking out the entrance way to the Lenaway Historical Museum. Okay, folks, I'm going to take you on a little tour of the Lenaway Historical Museum. This place is fabulous, fabulous, and fabulous. Did I say fabulous? Very, very unique building here. Used to be the old, old library a long time ago when I was a kid. They got so much cool stuff here, it's unbelievable. We're going to try to catch as much of it as we can for you.
George and Sarah Robinson Wilt, Ogden Township, 1880. Look at that old picture. Sorry about the glare, folks. I'm doing the best I can with the equipment that I have. My name's The Raven, and have I told you lately that you're watching GlobalWorldTV.com, Adrian's first television station. Yeah, I'm making a little history myself here. It's time for the Raven to give back. That's where I grew up, folks. This little town called Adrian, Michigan. When I was a little Raven. Hey, let's check this out. Frazier Auditorium. We're going to show you this, too, a little later. This is a 1911 Lion automobile. They were manufactured right here in Adrian. They have one downstairs, folks. Awesome. Hmm. The elevator goes all the way to the top. Excellent. I can bring Barbara up here. Some old pictures on the wall. Lots of old photographs here in the Adrian Historical Museum. The Wheeler Block, 127 West Maumee, Adrian, Michigan. Take a little walk in the Frazier Auditorium here. Look at this, folks. They got a stage up there. Seats right here. You can rent this auditorium also. Tons of exhibits here. Look at this old church organ here. Wow. Nice, nice, nice. It's an old baby carriage right there. Hi, it's okay. Looking around at the Lenaway Historical Museum. Here's what an old schoolhouse used to look like, folks. There's the blackboard right there. Some of the old desks. Fabulous, fabulous, fabulous old building. Taking a walk around Fraser Auditorium for you here, folks. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Some old baby carriages up here on the stage. See, they have a stage right here, folks. There's a piano up there. A 
podium right there. And then you have all the seats out here. Fabulous, fabulous room. Here's a picture of West Maumee looking west from the northwest corner of Maine and Maumee. Eighteen ninety. That's what Adrian used to look like, folks. Back in the day. Some of the Lenawee County pioneers photographed 1922. That's a long picture, folks. Walking around the Lenaway County Historical Museum. This place is fabulous, folks. And did I mention that almost every museum you go to in the world charges a couple bucks at the door? Well, this one's free. Mr. David Medcalf made his fortune in the railroad business. Between 1858 and 1882, he moved to Adrian in 1883. Looking around, all the cool stuff, folks. Hey, there's a little cameo of the raven right there. Hey, folks, how you doing? <laughs> Shooting a little movie for you here at the Lenaway Historical Museum. Now, this room here is all fixed up like a dry goods place, like an old dry goods store. Stuff hanging on the walls and the shelves. Stuff in the case. Some of the old jewelry. Let's 
fabulous, fabulous stuff at the museum here, folks. There's a jar with buttons. That used to be a big thing in the old days, you know, buttons. Looking around at all the cool stuff at the museum, folks. It's a cash register, an old cash register. Right there. Fabulous, fabulous. It's a cash register loaned to the museum by Stan and Clone Smith. Here's some old, some old clothes that people used to wear. Some old black dress right there, and a suit and a hat. Check out the counter itself. in the little store here. Fabulous, fabulous counter. Look at that thing. Some old shoes. Anti-slavery, Underground Railroad movement. It was big here in Lenawee County. There's Miss Laura Havlin right there. She was big in the anti-slavery movement here in Lenawee County. Yeah, folks, there's a lot of history right here at the museum. And that's a fact.
looking around the historical museum. Fabulous, fabulous, fabulous. There she is, folks, Laura Havlin. Laura Havlin and Elizabeth Comstock. Right there, this lady was instrumental in the Underground Railroad movement here in Adrian, Michigan, Lenaway County. Part of her diary right here. Her own handwriting right there. Hey, I hear a bell ringing. You're looking at artifacts from Miss Laura Havlin. For more information of Laura Havlin or the Underground Railroad in Lenaway County, the Lenaway County Historical Society offers the above publications for your purchase available at the front desk. And this one is fabulous. The Heavenly Miss Havlin. I've read that one. It's great. I'm going to read that one real soon. I have both of them. Heavenly Miss Havlin. Looking around at some of the artifacts in the Lenaway County Historical Museum. Look at this. Babies down there in a bassinet. I guess it's a bassinet. Oreo buggy. Guess it's a baby buggy. Now look at this thing here. Nineteen fifty seven. Yeah. Phil Donahue worked here. Donahue game became program director for James Garrity's radio station WABJ in Adrian, Michigan, which is still running today. There he is, folks. He worked right here in Adrian for a while.
the turntable from the radio station. Fabulous. Look at that. This old radio gear. I had a real soft spot in my heart for that old broadcasting equipment. You know I'm a grassroots broadcaster myself. I like to fly by the seat of my pants. <laughs> I don't know how to read the dials, but I can play that rock and roll, baby. <laughs> my name's The Raven. I'm up here at Fraser Auditorium for you. Just looking around. Look at this dress. I mean it. Man, oh man. Look at that. Fabulous, fabulous clothes they used to wear in the old days. Look at this, folks. Right behind it, we have a fabulous patchwork quilt. Look at that thing. 1900. Wow. And the dress is so stunning. Look at that. I'd like to get one of those for my gal and take her out in that today. Maybe something else. These old cameras, folks. Kind of funny. This is old camera gear from long times gone by. And it meets a digital camera in my hands. <laughs> kind of ironic. Look at that little mini one down there. Little tiny camera. I used to have one of those when I was a kid. Used to be able to get them in the comic books. I think those are movie cameras right there. I think that's a movie camera. Actually. Some kind of a light meter, maybe. Hmm. What else we got down here in the case? Hey, Ludwig Drums. We know that name. This thing's interesting. Look at this. It's a, called a zither. Combination of a mandolin and a guitar. Look at that. Some flutes. Actually a fife. Right there. Tuning fork. And a flute. hanging around in Fraser Auditorium up here for you folks. I haven't even left the first room yet. We still have a whole museum to go. Look at this. Stuff loon in a hand blown glass case. Typewriters, look at these. Fabulous, fabulous old museum.
Now here's something, folks. I'm going to show you this. This is St. John's Lutheran Church. That's the church the raven went to when he was a little tiny raven. Looks like some kind of a wood burning. But that's Adrian St. John's Lutheran Church right there, no doubt about it. It's on the National Historic Registry. When I was a little kid, I went to that church. It's still standing out there today. Right there, St. John's Lutheran Church. Now that might surprise you a little bit that the raven's a God-fearing man. But, uh... I already figured out a long time ago that everything comes from God. So, uh, you know, you might be better to figure that out soon in your life, too. Walking around the Fraser Auditorium here. Fabulous, fabulous room. Fabulous room. All these windows. Chairs. And the floor itself, look at that, hardwood floor, fabulous, fabulous. Heading into the Victorian room, 19th century home furnishings, folks. Take a little walk in here, Victorian room, and see what we can see for you today, folks. Look at that dress. Wow. Well, I bet one of them gals was all dolled up wearing that thing. Look at that. Go to a maybe a big dinner or an evening out on the town. We got some of the hats the guys would have wore. Look at that. Straw hats there. Top hats. Little dressing table there with a mirror on it. Hey, there's the raven right there. canes over there. And look at this fabulous furniture. All these quilts hanging on the wall. Look at this. Now this is an interesting machine right here, folks. This is a Meg Lithoscope. Hard to pronounce circa 1860 an optical instrument highly prized in Victoria living rooms use special photographs and natural light to make world scenes come alive in three dimensions look at this thing this is a very very rare machine I can assure you early, early, early predecessor to what you're watching today. Look at this thing. Imagine you put your pictures in there somehow. And you open those doors up right there, probably, and the light shines in on the pictures. And you view it through that end there. I'm just assuming that because I never ran one before. <laughs> I'm not going to touch this one. But it's a fabulous, fabulous machine. The light is low up here, folks. I'm doing the best I can without a 
bright light. Look at all this stuff in here. Wow. Teacups, silverware. Fabulous, fabulous stuff. Look at this. There you go. These are Aunt Abby's dishes. Look at this stuff. Look at these little spoons. Fabulous. Now, folks, my name's The Raven. I told you once before that I was a little raven. I grew up here in Adrian, Michigan. Yeah, we had a little bad luck when I was four years old. My dad passed away. My mom had to go to work. She went to work at the GM plant out there in between Adrian and Tecumseh. She worked out there for years and years and years. And then they sold the plant, gave her the heave-ho. That's what your car companies will do for you after you put in a lifetime with them. But she survived. She hung around here in Adrian for a lot of years before moving to Manchester, Michigan, and then up to Grass Lake. But I still feel a connection with Adrian. I went to high school here. Had a lot of fun here when I was a kid. Look at this old Vic Victor machine. Victor Victrola Phonograph, 1920. Fabulous. There's the dog. Check this old stove out, folks. This thing's actually hooked up. I don't know if they still use it or not. But they might. I bet that thing will kick out some heat. Look at that. Some more clothes. Taking a little look around the whole room for you here, folks. Look at this. Fabulous, fabulous, fabulous stuff. Look at the headboard on that bed. Man. Stained glass window is beautiful. Look at that. Memory of Carolina Baldwin, Adrian Garden Club.
Picture of Abraham Lincoln right there. Now here's the Croswell Opera House Orchestra, 1885. This is a wine cabinet. Doing the best we can with the lighting up here. One of these days God's going to let me win that big time lottery, baby, and I'm going to buy some really good cameras. And I'm going to show you what internet TV is all about. Until then, we got to make do with this little digital handy cam here. And it's not bad, folks. You're getting a tour of the Adrian Lenaway Historical Museum. And don't forget. There's a link on our page, globalworldtv.com and daytonabeach-live.com to the website for the museum. Look at this thing. This cabinet itself is just awesome, folks. Look at this thing. They don't make furniture like that anymore. I'll guarantee it. Go down to Sears and Roebuck and try to buy one of these. They'll laugh you out of the store. Look at this. Fabulous. Real wood. Replica of early manufactured Marilat kitchen. Now, Marilat started right here. You might have heard of that Marilat stuff. They started right here in Adrian, Michigan, as far as I know. They had a factory here for many, many years. Here's what one of their modern Marilat kitchens look like. Look at this. It's Marilat cabinets. Stove. Uh. There they are, folks, the Marilats.
Looking around up here, the Adrian Historical Museum, top floor, fabulous, fabulous, fabulous stuff. If you all ever have some time and you're in downtown Adrian, you ought to stop by the museum. Come in and see this stuff for yourself. The museum is free. Look at this dress. Fabulous. Personally, I love taking a trip through a museum. Shows me how the old people used to live back in the old days. Look at this. There's a desk right here. Okay, he used to sit there and do his bills, maybe. A picture hanging up above the desk. Books. People used to read back in the old days, folks. Look at that chair right there. Eh. Bet that thing's comfortable. Look at that. Here we got a rocking chair. East Lake Platform Rocker. kitchen over there. All the dishes. Look at these. My grandma used to have some stuff like this. Blue stuff. Fabulous, fabulous little tour you're getting of the Adrian Historical Museum, folks. I don't know what you're doing sitting watching internet TV. You're supposed to be doing that file for the boss, aren't you? Well, when I was a little raven, I grew up around here. I just thought I'd show you some of the cool stuff that's hanging around. Recipes, the WABJ Radio Cookbook, Dutch Cookbook, Candy, oh yeah, Bacon Powder, Some of the steins. And cups. Taking a walk around the historical museum for you. Look at this old light.
stained glass windows for you. People walking down there, downtown Adrian, looking out of the museum window. Hey, there I am, folks, waving at you. Hi, folks, how you doing? My name's The Raven. And you're taking a little tour of the Adrian Historical Museum with me. The place I grew up when I was a little raven. Hope you're having a good time. And don't forget, you're watching GlobalWorldTV.com, Adrian's first internet television station. Yeah, I'm making a little history myself here. That's why it seemed kind of like a fitting thing for me to come down to the history museum <laughs> now look at this little piece of equipment here a piece of furniture looks just like a regular old dresser doesn't it now I happen to know that if you grab that thing and move the top of it right there there's a little wash basin under there place you can wash up. Back in the old days they didn't have plumbing in all the rooms, you know? That's how you washed up. Look at this. Now, James Sword was the first mayor of Adrian after Adrian was chartered as a city, 1853. Mr. Sword owned Sword's Brick Manufacturing Plant on West Maple near Mackenzie Street. First mayor of Adrian, right there. A noble looking guy. Right, bef right bef below Mr. Swords' picture, look at this. It's one of those wash basins. This is not a hidden one, it's one on the top. Pour your water in that bowl right there and you could wash your face, your hands. Really nice piece of furniture, look at this. with a picture of the mayor. An old suit somebody used to wear. Let's see what it says on the ticket there. Perry Hayden of Tecumseh. Perry was the grandson of William Hayden who founded Hayden Milling Company in Tecumseh. Fabulous furniture. Look at this. That's a nice china closet right there. I like that. Now here's a turn of the century kitchen. Let's see what it looks like. Turn of the century. Look at this. A 
if you was a little shaver back in the old, old days, this is what it looked like in your mom's kitchen. I mean, real old days. Look at this. Look at this oven. Look at that. What is this thing? Royal Master Electric. Look at that thing. Three ninety five. Faraday Electric Corporation. You broil some food with that thing. And here's your oven. Look at that. The burners, electric burners, right next to that. Here's your controls right down there. Wow, this was modern time stuff back in the old, old days. Kitchen covered cabinet there. Stove right next to it in the oven. Whoa, what's this thing? Looks like a refrigerator. Woo. They don't make them like that anymore. Wow. That's how you kept your milk cold in the old days, folks. Compressor and all that stuff on the top. And we got some of your old appliances here. Here's an old tea kettle. Look at that thing. I'm not sure what this thing is. A gas iron. Well, looks like kind of a contraption to me. <laughs> I'm not sure how all this stuff works, folks. It looks like a steam iron right there to me. I bet you put hot water in that thing. Somehow it steams. Maybe, maybe not. <laughs> Here's an old high chair for the little kids. Little potty chair for the little, little guys or girls. Look, there's a little washing machine right there. Little tiny washing machine. Hey, it's electric, folks. The Handy Hoff. Hmm. Sweet. Look at that. Rings your clothes out and everything. Got a ring around it. I wouldn't mind firing that thing up. Washing a couple of my shirts in there. I bet that thing worked pretty good. You got the crank over there on the side to crank your ring your clothes dry. And here, the Ironite Ironer, model number 85. Mangler. That's a steam. Then you put your clothes in there. Kind of. You close that thing down and it flattens them out, I guess. <laughs> Here's a kitchen table for you, folks. Sit down there at the kitchen table. Have your little bite to eat. In your modern day kitchen, there's some Coca-Cola signs. There's some toasters up there. Look at that. That's how you used to toast your bread. There's an old egg beater. Look at that thing.
Awesome. The stove is completely out of this world. Let's head back into the Victorian room. See what we can see. I think we've about come to the end of the Victorian room. Look, here's another one of these awesome cabinets. Look at this. The workmanship on these things is just awesome. Totally stunning. I used to work with wood back in the old, old days. Wood is really cool. I got some dolls in here, some toys, some old blocks the kids used to play with, some little dolls. different kind of dolls that they made throughout the years and teddy bears there's a teddy bear for you up there that's a real teddy bear right there After Teddy Roosevelt. Some of the figurines. hanging around upstairs the Lenaway County Historical Museum fabulous fabulous stuff folks the baby's crib right here at the foot of the bed look at that awesome the end of the bed Wow. Headboard is just totally awesome. I hope you're enjoying this little tour of the historical museum for you. It's a little tiny library right here.
going to have a cool bedroom, you got to have some music. It's an old music machine right there. Showing you some money, folks. Check this out. Silver certificate right there. And look at this one right here, folks. A three dollar bill. Bank of Adrian. Wow. Adrian had its own money, folks. Look at that. Adrian, Michigan. Three bucks. <laughs> Go figure that. Look at this little tiny money. Ten cents. That's an old dime. Hanging around the Adrian, Michigan, Lenawee County Historical Museum for you folks. Lenawee County Bank, three dollars. Yep, we had our own money, folks. Ah, the elevator. There's a bike for you. And another one up there. Look at this one. Wow. What a contraption that thing is. Look at it. You sit on that seat and you hang on to those handles right there. Hey, Bob, let me show you the post office. Look at that. This is an old, old post office box. I remember those when I was a kid. From Indianapolis. In the Riga Post Office. I guess it started out over there in Indianapolis.
Here's an old stamp machine. Look at that. There's some one cent, three cent stamp machines. When's the last time you saw one of those, Martha? Looking around the Lenaway Historical Museum. Used to be the old library, folks. My name's The Raven. Let me remind you that we're making history here, too. You're watching Adrian's first television station, as far as we can tell. Look at that thing. Crazy bites. Huge picture over the fireplace. Miss Lucy Hunter, a leader in Adrian's African American community in the first half of the 20th century. There she is, folks. New Haven Mantle Clock. Nice. Who's this lady? Natty Lawson lived in Adrian in the late 1800s, early 1900s. There's something right there I'm going to show you in a little bit, folks. That's a real Gatling gun sitting over there. Check this out. Taking a tour of the Adrian Lenaway County Historical Museum. Fabulous, fabulous collection. Most awesome. It's right here in downtown Adrian for you folks. And guess what? It's free. There's an old dugout canoe they found. Found on the shores of Lake Huron River, 1948. That's how they used to build back in the old days. Buckskin clothes right there. Look at that. Veterinary and dentist. <laughs>
That's the guy you want working on your teeth. I got some arrowheads down here. We can add some arrowheads down here. Look at this. Buckskin shirts right there. Welcome to the pioneer section of the museum. Before the European settlement, Lenawee County land was visited in the summer by Indians who came to hunt and fish. The Indians had a large summer meeting ground on the River Raisin near what is now the Tecumseh Community Center on M50. To your left is a case of Indian artifacts you might find interesting. Starting in the 1820s, a group of entrepreneurs came into Lenawee with the express intention of establishing towns to serve a future surrounding agricultural area. The motivation was profit. They could buy large plots of land very cheaply from the government and increase the land's value by dividing the land into lots and selling them off to new settlers. The first was Musgrove Evans, who in 1824 established the Cumsey on the banks of the River Raisin at the place where the river was crossed by an Indian trail running from Lake Erie. You are standing in front of a replica of a pioneer cabin interior. Musgrove Evans housed himself, his wife, and six children in a log cabin not much bigger than this one. The second was Harvey Blitz, who established Blitzfield in June 1824 on high ground surrounded by swampy land, which settlers had to drain in order to farm the rich soil. The third was Edison Comstock, who, at 23 years of age, in 1825, on advice of Musgrove Evans, followed the Indian Trail, now Occidental Highway, south, and established his town, Adrian, on the River Raisin, in the center of an area that he thought had great agricultural potential. The fourth was Alpheus Keis, who in 1829 established the town on the Indian Great Sauk Trail, where it crossed the River Raisin and named it after Governor DeWitt Clinton of New York. A similar pattern was found a little later on the western side of Lenaway with the towns of Addison, Hudson, and Morenci, established along Bean Creek. Notice that all the early communities were on the river. Water and transportation were essential. Each of these towns developed in much the same manner. In the case of Adrian, Comstock built a log cabin in an oak grove on the banks of the River Raisin near what is now Comstock Park. Then he constructed downstream north from his home a sawmill and a gristmill. He then platted 72 lots with two streets, Main Street following the Indian Trail north and south, and Maumee Street following east and west. One of the first lots sold was for the Exchange Hotel. Every town needed a hotel where people moving in could stay while building their place to live. Dr. Conant Winter built a trading post across from the hotel and then got Comstock to create another north and south street between Main Street and the river running by his store. The street was named Winter Street. Hundreds of small entrepreneurs established farms and rapidly moved into Lenawee County around these towns. If you look in the Pioneer Room, you'll find samples of tools and artifacts used by early farmers. Thank you for visiting our museum. We hope you continue your tour. We have a great deal more to show you. This video was sponsored by the Marillette Foundation. That was a neat little movie, folks.
five part presentation. We'll show you some of the other ones. Take a little walk around, see what we can see here. Early depiction of a pioneer cabin. One of the rooms. Get the gun up there above the hearth, above the fireplace. Pots right there to cook on. Got a yarn winder right there. And a spinning wheel. Or another yarn winder, I'm not, <laughs> not exactly sure. Looking around the Lenawee County Historical Museum. Pitcher pump. Okay, now they're talking about this tub right here. It's an old bathtub, folks. Look at that. That's how you took a bath in the old, old days going by. And that is the actual soap right there. Manufactured right here in Adrian, Michigan. Oh, Adrian was a manufacturing hub in the old days. My name is The Raven, 
and you're watching GlobalWorldTV.com. We're Adrian's first television station, folks. Now, this is an old funeral hearse slid, I understand. Take those seats out of there. You can just fit a coffin in there. And when you're not using it for coffin driving, put the seats back in. You can ride around. It's an old sleigh. See the runners down there? Check out the beautiful wood floor here at the Historical Museum also. Fabulous, fabulous old building. Bunch of stuff in the sled. They got saws and a bunch of tools in there. Somebody's old hat. Now here's an old device they used to use to gather the hay. Look at that. Hanging up on the ceiling there. Fabulous, fabulous. Check out the old building itself, folks. Cool, cool, cool. Here's some fur gloves for you. Look at these. Some real fur gloves. Look at them. There's your buggy whip. Nineteenth century station wagon, there it is. Fabulous ride. No heater. Tools. Look at that. We're checking out the Lenaway County Historical Museum. Look at this old iron folks. My name's The Raven, and you're watching GlobalWorldTV.com. We're Adrian's first television station. Making a little history for you here. Don't forget to stop by our sister station, DaytonaBeach-Live.com, folks. Daytona Beach, Florida's first internet-only television station. Player piano rolls right there. Look at that. Fabulous. Fabulous. Here's a guy riding that bike.
Hey folks, you're standing down here at the Lenaway County Historical Museum. The 2009 calendar is for sale for $2. We have a link on our website to get to the Lenaway County Historical Museum website. And you can contact these people and buy one of the calendars. Lenaway County Historical Museum, 2009 calendar from Adrian, Michigan. The fine, fine folks over at the Historical Museum would be glad to sell you one. Just use the link on our webpage. Click on it, Bob. You know how to do that. Get over to the Lenaway County Historical Museum website and get you a calendar or some of the other publications that they have for sale. My name's The Raven, and you're watching GlobalWorldTV.com. Adrian's first television station. Hey, we're making a little history ourselves here. In front of you is a picture of the first train engine used on the Adrian to Toledo line. Below is a section of the original track used. The metal strap iron on top was original to the train track. The wood part is new. To your right is the telegraph table used later on the Adrian Railroad. Thomas Edison was one of the young men who operated the telegraph in Adrian. After Comstock established his town of Adrian, he recognized that getting settlers was difficult because they had to come from Toledo through the great cottonwood swamps to the south or from the north. The settlers coming from the north were finding Clinton and Tecumseh good alternatives. Well, what to do? Comstock reflected back on the new development he had seen in New York State, railroads. He decided a railroad from Adrian to Toledo was the answer. Thus was initiated the second entrepreneur leap for Lenawee County. Comstock was then 26 years old in 1827. He raised some money, formed a company, and went to work. There are no records as to how he did it, but he did. He built the first railroad west of the Appalachian Mountains. A six-day trip was reduced to half a day. In 1837, the Michigan Legislature authorized the Michigan Central Railroad, which was to run across southern Michigan. The railroad came through Adrian because it could connect Adrian to the Toledo Line. Because Adrian was the connection into Ohio, the Michigan Central offices were moved from Monroe to Adrian. In the 1850s, Adrian gradually became a railroad town. Immigrants from Germany, Ireland, and other European countries came to Adrian to provide the labor for the railroad shops. Their descendants are still important factors in Adrian's culture. In 1860, about 800 of Adrian's 6,000 residents worked for the railroad or railroad-related industries. There were foundries for various parts, shops to build and repair train cars, and train engines. Adrian became the third largest city in Michigan. There are still factories being used in Adrian that were once used for railroad purposes. Comstock certainly made his town successful. Look for monitor number three. That'll tell you about the next entrepreneur activity that moved Adrian forward when the railroad business moved away from Adrian. This video was sponsored by the Marillat Foundation. Back in 1864, Thomas Edison was a telegraph operator in Adrian, folks. Check this out. This is the telegraph setup that he had right here. table that he sat at right here.
walking around the Lenawee County Historical Museum. Look at this. Here's a picture of the building we're in. I believe that's the old lion car out there. Stock did it. The Edison table over there. Check out the little train set, folks. He's coming around the bend. That's one big ping, folks. Look at that. Now look at that up there, that's wire fence. And I think they invented that right here.
some of the machinery used to make the fence. Adrian used to be the fence capital of the world. I never knew that. Guess I should stop by my local history museum once in a while. Economic growth. As the railroad service industry started to slowly decline, Lenaway for a while remained vibrant with the development of many small industries. Utilities such as gas, water, electricity, and new retail companies were developing. Eventually, the railroad service industry decline was too great, and economic doldrums began to set in. Just in time, the next major Lenaway entrepreneur appeared on the scene. J. Wallace Page was raised on a farm near Rollin in the western part of the county. Now, wire fencing was replacing wood fence, but the wire fence had to be retightened frequently, which was an irksome task. Page invented a loom for weaving the wire so it didn't sag. In 1888, Page established his fence factory in Adrian in buildings formerly used to manufacture railroad parts. Page's fence manufacturing business became a major business in the United States. With the addition of eight other fence companies in Lenawee County, Lenawee County became the woven wire fence capital of the world. It was a time when the western part of the United States was developing. It was said that Lenawee fenced the west and was a major factor in the westward expansion. On the wall before you are pictures and artifacts that relate to Mr. Page and other fence manufacturers. To your right is a board with samples of the various weaves made by Page Woven Wire Fence Company. Note the Deer Park picture. Page maintained a large animal enclosure in the county west of Adrian for marketing purposes to show the strength of Page Fence. Today, it is a nice home subdivision within the city limits of Adrian. For 30 years, Lenaway prosperity was sustained by the fence industry. But then, as with railroads, Lenaway's location was not central enough, and the fence industry began to move to Pennsylvania where wire was manufactured. The boom in woven wire manufacture reached its end near 1920 when J. Wallace Page died. His factories were sold to American Chain and Cable who manufactured wire cables for bridges, cable assemblies for the auto industry, and others until 1979. Shortly after Page began his business, two other groups of entrepreneurs tried their hands in manufacturing automobiles. One was the Murray. The museum's Murray car sits across the center aisle to your left. Murray production ended for economic reasons. In 1904, the other car manufactured in Lenaway was the Lion automobile. Our Lion car sits to the left of the Murray. Because of a massive fire, with over 1,500 finished and partially finished Lion cars, destroyed the company, went out of business, ending Adrian's chance to become a major player in the manufacture of automobiles. With the decline of the fence industry and the failure of the automobile to become viable, Lenaway saw difficult times through the 20s and the early 30s. It was then that another man stepped forward to revive Lenaway County's economic activity. Watch the video of the refrigeration industry in Lenaway County in video number four. And thank you for watching. The Lenaway Historical Museum is happy to have you here. Enjoy your stay. This video was sponsored by the Maryland. Checking out an old newspaper press.
out this boat whistle. Look at this. There's just something cool around every corner here. Adrian's got a long history of manufacturing, folks. Look at this. Here's an old Hoover machine. Look at this. Old electric vacuum cleaner. Real old. Next to a broom. Now here's a couple old sweepers here. Look at that. beater hang your rugs over the line and beat them with that rug beater right there Hey Shoe Company, 13 North Main Street in Adrian. You had to order your shoes made. Check that machine out. Get you a good fit with that machine right there. Can add some old tools. Maybe those old tools.
female barber. How you sharpened up your razors for shaving. Razor strap. Made in Adrian. Boy, they sure made a lot of stuff in Adrian. Hey, there's the parking lot, folks. Back to modern days. Cups. Here's your old barber chair. Look at that. Fabulous. Some old razors down there. Razor blades. Avon talcum powder right there. Look at this thing. permanent wave from that thing right there. It's electric, folks. Ah. Sit in that chair right there. Get your hair dried. That's how the old hair dryers used to look. Whew. Used to be rough. Then, I guess after you Tried your hair, you could call somebody on the phone. <laughs> that big thermometer right there. The old tools they used to use in the carpenter shops back in the old days.
Irish Hill Towers right there, folks. Check that out. Take a little walk up here, folks, and see what we can see. I told you once, this is an old library. This is where the librarian used to sit. She used to watch all the kids so they didn't get in trouble. Now they have toys of yesterday up here. Check out these old roller skates. Not like the ones they ride today, that's for sure. Those ones clipped right on your shoes. There's some wooden wheel ones right there. Looks like an old skateboard. That little tractor right up there, I used to have one of those when I was a kid. About like that. Some little cast iron cook stoves. Some little pots and pans. Coffee pot. Another little stove. A little tiny stove over there. Some of the toys kids used to play with. Little tiny iron, little tiny one. Stuffed animals, little high chair for your baby doll. Little tiny ironing board right here. You can be just like mommy right there. Iron your clothes. Little toy trains for the boys. Little telephones so you can call up all your friends. And a little wagon train up there. Look at all these cool little toys. All the kids used to play with back in the old, old days. Quite a bit different from the toys that we have nowadays, huh, kids? There's a little baby bed for your dolly. If you look real close, there's a bicycle right there. Little buggies for your dollies. For all the little girls. There's another bike. 1950 tricycle. Look at that thing. That's quite a bit different from the one I had when I was a little shaver. And hey, look at the sleds. Fabulous, fabulous old sleds. Look at that. There's a dog suit. Fireplace logs, some horses, a wagon. Storage shed, got you some 
blocks. Here's a hobby horse right here, rocking horse. Look at that. Hey, let's turn this thing on and see what this thing does. Look at those airplanes flying around, kids. Wow, that was cool. Those airplanes. Some baseball bats right there. And an old mitt. And the planes are slowing down. Take a little look around the museum from upstairs here, where you've just been walking. There's the old print and press. There's the fence display over there. Western Union, Thomas Edison's table down there. One of my favorite, favorite displays at the museum. the old boat whistle. All the lights and the roofs. Got a mock-up of an old dry goods store here. Look at that. Fabulous. Fabulous. You're looking around the Lenaway County Historical Museum from the Crow's Nest. My name is The Raven. You're watching this most fabulous movie on Adrian's first television station www.globalworldtv.com Hey, you looking to play a game of checkers, Bob? You're taking a little tour with the Raven through the Lenaway County Historical Museum, a most awesome, awesome place. And folks, I didn't have anything else to do today. I was just hanging around on the weekend. And you know, I figured I'd take you guys on a little tour and show you some of the cool, cool stuff they have over here at the museum. Now this used to be the old, old library at one time. Long, long time ago. All the toy trucks down there. Marble games. Toy guns. Ceramic toys. Little washboard. And here's a dollhouse. Look at this, folks. Fabulous little dollhouse for the little girls. I'll bet some little girls spent hours and hours and hours 
playing in one of these little doll houses. There's an old time Ouija board right there. Look out, folks. You don't want to hear what's coming next. <laughs> The Ouija's pretty mysterious. There's an old seed sack. Hayden Flour Mills Incorporated, Tecumseh, Michigan. Check out the stove. Original pot bellied stove. Now, here's some old time prices for you steaks, 39 cents a pound. Round sirloin, T bone, or rib, it doesn't matter, folks. Standing rib roast, 39 cents a pound. Chickens, 39, 33 cents a pound. Rump roast. Wow, I need to go down to this place. What the? What store is this? Here we go. Peas, 19 cents. Corn, 19 cents. Franco American Spaghetti. You get two of them for 27 cents. Tomato Catsup, 23 cents. Campbell's Tomato Soup, two for 19. Maxwell House Coffees, Del Monte Coffees, 49 cents. Green Giant Peas, 19 cents. Beach Nut, quality coffee, 49 cents. Cigarettes, yuck. All popular brands, buck 63 a pack. Eh, we don't smoke them anyway. Those things are bad for you. But back in the old days, they didn't know it. <laughs> Look at all these wood things here. Treenware, wooden household objects. Nice, nice. Look at this. Fabulous stuff at the museum, folks. Quality ice cream. Made in Tecumseh. The Tecumseh Butter Company. Look at that. We serve quality ice cream. Them days are gone, folks. Everybody wanted to please back in the old days. Now they just want to take your money and kick you out the door. I like the old days myself. Look at this. I think that's a coffee grinder. Let's look down here and see what the sign says. Yep, Enterprise Coffee Grinder. Boy, that's a big thing. Look at that. I'll grind up your coffee beans, I'll bet you. And here's how you used to get your milk, folks. The milkman used to bring milk in those bottles right there. Leave them on your front porch. In the morning when you got up, you had your milk right there. I wanted to be a milkman when I was a little shaver. <laughs> but they phased it out. I was going to be an elevator operator too, folks. They phased it out too. I guess I'm just phased out. Here's some old smoking stuff. Half and half, Prince Albert. We used to have a joke. Uh, you know, when we were kids, we used to call up on the telephone and ask somebody, if you got Prince Albert in the can, they go, yeah. And we'd say, hey, you better let him out. <laughs> you know, stuff kids do. Okay, here's some old corn cob pipes. Smoking accessories. Sweet cube, a fine cut. Look at that. I'll bet that was some smooth smoking stuff there. But like I said, that smoking's bad for you kids. We know that now. These are just old antique artifacts. Look at some of these buttons here. Happy birthday, Uncle Sam. From the Bicentennial, 17... 76 to 1976. I remember that. And here, look, when you came in the dry goods store with your mom and dad, you had the peanuts up there in the jar. There's a candy jar, another candy jar. 
you kids would be screaming for that candy, and your mom and dad say, well, maybe just one. Look at all the stuff, all the mason jars. It's an old premium saltines can back there in Nabisco. Cool, cool, cool stuff, folks. You're lucky. I didn't have nothing else to do today. Celebrating 30 years in Adrian, J.B. McAdam and Sons, Grocers, corner of Tecumseh and Frank Street. Seventy-two years of service to Lenway County. Looking around the Lenaway Historical Museum. Some baseballs down here. Now they have a lot of publications here at the museum. Let me tell you folks, I've told you before, there's a link on our website to the county museum website. You can go there and you can contact these folks and you can buy some of these publications from them. Call them on the phone, send them a letter. Tell them you want to buy a couple of these. This is how they support the museum. Most of the museums that you go to anywhere in the world cost a few bucks at the door, Bob. You know I'm not making it up. This one is free. Cost you zero to walk through that door right there. Well, you're watching it on internet TV now. You got to get a hold of the museum website and buy some of these publications from them. Give them some money to keep this place open. And I'm telling you what, Bob, it'll be some of the coolest reading you've done in a while. If you still read. You remember how to read, don't you, Bob? My name's The Raven, and you're taking a little tour of the museum today. Okay, folks, we're walking into the main room. I'm going to show you something really, really cool. Look at this floor. Tile floor here. Awesome. Now look at all the stars. I'm going to show you something unique about one of them right here. Looking around the main room. Lenaway Historical Museum, Hadrian, Michigan. This is the old library, folks. Check out the floor. There's the main front desk area. There's where the old place where the librarian used to sit and watch all the kids. We were just up there. You have all the old toys up there. Now look at all these stars, folks.
this one star is a little bit different. Should be a dark colored one right there. That's the only star that does not have one. Okay, folks, I'm showing you something really cool here at the museum. This is a Christmas cactus, and her name is Esther, and she's been here maybe 40 years, they say. Long, long time. And they feed her every day, and they water her once in a while, and she's supposed to be. And that's Esther, the Christmas cactus, here at the Adrian, Michigan, Lenaway County Historical Museum. Back in the old day, they used to get water around town using wooden water pipes underground in the city of Adrian. 1870 to 1875. Look at this. It's a wooden water pipe. See, they got some metal banding around the thing. It's full of wood. That's how water flowed around town back in the day. Check this out, folks. Look at this. It's a replica. Elmer Smith House. Look at this. Time to show you something really cool here, folks. The Lion 40. Lion Motor Car Company, Adrian, Michigan. 1910 to 1912. Now these cars were manufactured right here in Adrian, Michigan. They had a plant right here over on Logan Street. Now the license plate on this car says Michigan 1912. Look at this automobile, folks. This is a fabulous, fabulous car. Let's look at the engine. Four 
four cylinder. out the headlights. Fabulous, fabulous automobile. It's a lion motor car. Nineteen oh nine Detroit Investors identified the vacant Lion Fence Company factory on Logan Street as a good facility for an automobile plant. Adrian people raised capital for the venture. Lion Motor Car Company built about fifteen hundred Lion cars in June nineteen twelve. A fire destroyed the factory and about sixty Lion cars. The company could not recover from the loss, and no more cars were built. William Saunders, an Adrian electrical contractor, located this car out west, bought it, and restored it in 1980. The Saunders family donated the lion to the museum in 2001, and we're so glad they did. Fabulous, fabulous automobile. Manufactured right here in Adrian, Michigan. There's the seats, steering wheel. Gauges down on the floor. Wooden floor. This is a nice car, folks. Lion Motor Car Company, Adrian, Michigan. Now here's a little thing from the Adrian Fire Department. There's an old nozzle head right there.
fire alarm box. There it is, folks. That's how they knew where to go and put out your fire. There it is, folks, when you ring the call box, it made that thing light up and told the fireman where to go. Imagine it rang that big bell right down there, too. There's one of the call boxes right there. You pull that thing, light up that big thing right there. Fabulous machine. There's a fire plug for you down there. Another car produced in Adrian, the Murray Motor Car, 1902 Murray Motor Car. Postman from early Adrian.